Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the, the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of calendar number five, H.R. 21, making appropriations for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2019. I further ask that the, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. Is there objections? Madam President. Majority Leader. Reserving the right to object. You know, there's a, a lot of important business the Senate uh, could be tackling. We've typically done that during these government shutdowns. But the last thing we need to do right now is to trade pointless, absolutely pointless, show votes back and forth across the aisle. Just a few days ago, very recently, not years ago, very recently, before the latest shifts in political winds, my good friend, the Democratic leader, completely agreed with me on this. In fact, he and I made an explicit commitment to several of our members on this very point. We announced it here on the floor. We agreed that we wouldn't waste the Senate's time on show votes related to government funding until a global agreement was reached that could pass the House, pass the Senate, and which the President could sign. Here's how the Democratic leader himself stated his position. Remember, this is very recently. In order for an agreement to be reached, all four congressional leaders must sign off and the president must endorse it and say he will sign it. That's how you make a law. Most importantly, the president must publicly support and say he'll sign an agreement before it gets a vote in either chamber. Before it gets a vote in either chamber. That was my good friend, the Democratic leader, just recently. So I intend to keep my word, and I intend to hold him to his. Yesterday, the White House made clear the president opposes piecemeal appropriations that neglect border security and would veto them. So obviously, that isn't going to become law. So this proposal flunks the Democratic leader's own test of a few days ago. So look, the political stunts are not going to get us anywhere. Senate Democrats should stop blocking the Senate from taking up other urgent matters, like the pending bill, bills concerning Israel and the Syrian civil war. In previous government shutdowns, the Senate's done business. The Senate hadn't been shut down. So that's what we ought to be doing, and actually, at the same time, negotiate with the President on border security, because nothing else is going to get a solution. Therefore, I object. Objection is heard. Uh, Madam President, if I could just very briefly, I'm extremely disappointed. I can assure you, the Majority Leader, this is not a sh showboat issue with 800,000 federal workers being denied their, their paycheck. The last time I checked the Constitution, we are a co-equal branch of government, and we should act as a co-equal branch of government and pass legislation that's overwhelmingly supported by this body. Majority Leader. Colleagues on the Democratic side of the aisle apparently have pledged to oppose proceeding to other important bills. We've experienced that, at least to this point, uh, during this government shutdown, even though there's no precedent for that. Uh, all but four uh, yesterday voted against the motion to proceed to S-1, and I'm assuming we'll vote against it again this afternoon. S-1, the bill they're preventing us from going to, has wide bipartisan support, is a critical step in supporting our allies in the Middle East, and securing peace in Syria. I've talked to many Americans who are intensely interested in the Israel issues. They don't understand why this important legislation be, be stymied over a dispute over something entirely different. So, Madam President, through the chair, I would ask Senator Cardin if this blockade against business on the floor is absolute. Madam Without President, objection, the senator from Maryland may respond. I, I might return the question asked the distinguished majority leader whether his objections to reopening government 
with action we've already taken previously is absolute. I can assure the Majority Leader that it's my commitment to our federal workers and to our country that the first order of business here should be the reopening of government. There's other important issues that we need to do that I strongly support. I, quite frankly, do not understand the Majority Leader's position as to why he would deny us a vote on reopening government that passed this body unanimously in the past. Madam President, I would say to my friend from, from Maryland, I'll repeat the question in a minute, but the answer to his question of me is because this will not produce a result. It's been perfectly clear that the only way to produce this result is for the President, the Speaker of the House, and the Minority Leader to agree because we need votes from Democrats, both in the Senate and the House, in order to pass a measure that the President will sign. But my question of the Senator from Maryland was, is this blockade against business on the floor absolute? Madam President. Senator from Maryland. And of course, I would repeat my request to the distinguished majority leader whether his objections are absolute. I, I just, let, me, let me just point this out. We passed the bill that I'm going to ask, I ask unanimous consent. Basically, that's been passed near unanimously by this body, 92 to 6 for these appropriations passed. The last time I checked the Constitution, that's enough even for a veto override. I don't think anything has changed. These bills have nothing to do, zero to do, with Homeland Security wall issue, zero. So why doesn't our distinguished majority leader, as the leader of a co-equal branch of government, allow us to speak on behalf of our responsibilities under Article I of the Constitution? Let us take our action that we can take right now, today, at this very moment, and pass six appropriation bills where there's no controversy whatsoever in this body. As I've said, Madam President, repeatedly, it won't, it won't solve the problem because the President's made it clear he won't sign them. So let me try again. Let me try one more time. Does the Senator, through the Chair, does the Senator intend to vote against proceeding to other measures? Senate will come to order. We have order in the Senate. Does the Senator intend to vote against proceeding to other measures during the government shutdown? M Madam President. Senator from Maryland. Madam President, my first order of priority right now, since we can do this at this very moment, is to reopen government. It's outrageous that government is closed. People's lives are being affected every minute. I just heard yesterday of a layoff of another 180,000, 180 jobs in my state because the Department of Agriculture is closed. We have an important economic development program in Baltimore that HUD can't act on the papers right now that's being delayed. To me, that's something we can get done right now. And as a senator from Maryland, I'm going to use every opportunity I can to reopen government in a responsible manner. And I am disappointed that the majority leader is not using the opportunity that we have right now to pass six appropriation bills that are not in controversy. If the majority leader could answer for me, why are we holding up these six bills that have nothing to do with the central debate argument? We can put enough votes on the board to show the President of the United States he doesn't have the support in the Senate, and we have the votes to override his veto. To me, that should be our first order of business. So, Madam President, I think since the Senator from Maryland is unwilling to answer my question, the assumption should be, and I say this to the, to the broad uh, pro-Israel uh, community in America that we uh, all interact with on issues related to the U.S.-Israel relationship, the Senator is saying he might well vote to proceed to something else, but not vote to proceed to these important Israel bills and this important Syria bill. So I just want to make sure everybody understands where we are. The uh, Senator is refusing to answer the question as to whether or not this blockade against Senate business applies to everything or just to these uh, pro-Israel bills. So I think the refusal to answer provides the answer uh, for our colleagues. Uh, we could, I assume, anticipate that Democrats will try to get votes on other matters during the government shutdown, but just not uh, the Israel issue and the Syria issue. 
Senator from Maryland. I will express my views on issues. I don't need the majority leader trying to express how I will vote on future issues. I'll answer the people of Maryland on how I will act on issues that are brought before the Senate. My top priority right now is to reopen government, and I'm very disappointed that the majority leader will not allow us to act as a co-equal branch of government. Would my colleague from Maryland yield? I would just say three words to my friend, the majority leader. Open the government. It's in your hands.